All right, race fans. Welcome to Turn Left TV. Be ready for some high speed action tonight. Step on the gas. All right, race fans. Welcome to the Serpent. This is Turn Left TV, and I'm your host, Heath Johnson. Sim Racing Mania heads to the snake, the Serpent of Sepang. It's the final race of the season in the Hypercar World Series. Who's going to take home the championship? I think we've got that one figured out. Who's going to take home the win? Oh, well, I don't know. Who's going to be able to survive the rain? It's raining. The snake is wet. All right, hey, thank you so much for coming in. This is Turn Left TV. A little bit of, uh, tried a little slideshow there. That didn't work, but uh, that's okay. Well, we're at Sepang tonight. Uh, very good track, very fun track. And uh, these guys have just finished up the qualification session. Actually, it looks like they got about three minutes left in the qualification session. I'm your host, Heath Johnson, and uh, what a great race this is going to be. 75-minute race in the rain. I think I saw some puddles on the track. Uh, that's right. Uh, pretty big field here. Got 15 drivers so far joining us here in the qualification session. And uh, I think it's going to be a very, very fun race. If this track isn't tough enough, uh, add a little bit of rain and uh, you are in for a ride. We'll take a look at the track here at Sepang, located in Sepang, Malaysia. I call it the snake, man, because this thing just got twists and turns, undulations, and this thing will reach out and bite you. See, just about five and a half kilometers in length. A lot of, uh, a lot of turns out here are going to create some problems for some guys. I tell you what, uh, man, these are, I think the ones that are hardest for me, not so much the chicane, or not so much the really tight uh, turns are really the wide sweeping turns. Those are the ones that really have uh, given me the most trouble when I was out here driving some laps. So um, I'm sure these guys got it uh, figured out. 15 turns in order. You don't want to forget where you are. And again, uh, the snake, the serpent of Sepang here tonight in the Sim Racing Mania Hypercar World Series. Take a look at uh, Jack G as he's trying to make his qualification attempt here. Right now shown 11th on the grid. Going around a little bit too much there for Jack G. Jack G in the kitty litter. The uh, Lorenzo Finetto makes his qualification attempt here. It's just a, under a minute left to go.
Let's take a look at the point standings coming into tonight. Cliff Vandeven in control. Uh, brother Dennis just behind there, uh, 47 points back. I tell you what, he's going to need a miracle uh, to be able to uh, uh, catch uh, Cliff. Uh, Giacomo Latore sits in the third position. So the battle for second and third, a little bit tighter there. And uh, you can definitely see those change hands. I think Richie Tapp has got an outside shot of making it into the uh, on the podium uh, for the season. Sits in the fourth position. Thomas Golom fifth. Christoph Rosinski sits sixth in point. Dante Rossi seventh in points. Maximilian Pinter uh, sits eighth. Valerio Margarito ninth. And Antonello Amastro rounding out the top ten coming into tonight. And again, this is Sepang, uh, located in Sepang, Malaysia. I'm your host, Keith Johnson, the commentator, the broadcaster. Flag to flag coverage here for the final round in the Hypercar World Series. Oh, I got the Endurance Series up there. Man, what an amateur I am. Like uh, Lorenzo Fanato finishing up his lap here. So that does it for the qualification session. We'll take a look at the results. Thomas Golm, top time, 155.699. Cliff Vandeven starts in P2. Richie Tappel will start in P3. P4 will be Antti Rossi. Uh, Michael Brooks, the third member of that Team Future uh, effort there, starting in the fifth position. Joseph Vandersteren will start sixth. Dennis Vandeven starts in the seventh position. Stefano De Nadal starts eighth. Christoph Rusinski starts in the ninth position. In 10th will be Giacomo Atori. Qualifying in the 9th position is Giuseppe Lapitra. In the 11th position, Jack G. Qualifying in the 12th position. In that 12 car, Valerio Margarito in the 17 car starts in 13th. Lorenzo Fanetto will start in the 14th position. And Antonello Mastro will qualify or qualifies in the 15th position. This is going to be wild, man. I tell you what, I see puddles forming on the track. Could be a big point shake up here, too, man. Add a little bit of rain into this mix. Well, there are going to be some guys starting behind the eight ball here a little bit. Let's take a look at the heavy load warning. These are guys have weight penalties, so ballast. Success ballast, that's what they call it. That's the nice way of saying we're going to penalize you for doing so well. We're going to throw a bunch of weight in your car. So Cliff Vandeman has a... Uh, a teenage child sitting on the right side of that car. Thomas Golom has a, he and Antti Rossi both have a uh, mid-sized dog added onto their uh, machine. Dennis Vandeven has a fat cat. Uh, 10 kilograms of uh, weight ballast. And Giacomo Atori has a mid-sized rabbit in his car. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm trying to do the uh, conversion from uh, kilograms to pounds. Uh, and uh, okay, there we go. I think I got him right. So there are the uh, the heavy load warning, uh, the uh, success ballast on the four drivers coming into tonight. Five drivers, I should say. I 
I want to say thank you so much for coming in to the YouTube channel and checking out Turn Left TV. Always appreciate people being here. Peace to all my friends out there. Hope everybody's behaving themselves. Man, I got things all jacked up here. It's right, right there. You see that subscribe button? Just smash it. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Again, thanks for coming in. Don't forget to make a donation to Turn Left TV by clicking on the link up in the banner of the channel. And again, uh, thanks for coming in tonight. Sim Racing Mania uh, asked me to uh, broadcast this race. I said, absolutely, man. This would be a great one. Uh, Hypercar World Series is always a fun uh, series. And then, of course, Sim Racing Mania, those guys do it upright. All right, we've got a good size field here, a lot of talent in this field, a little bit of rain. It's going to add a little bit uh, to the, uh, the festivities, I think, tonight. Uh, thanks uh, for Dino Faldetta coming in here. And Alexander Meskov, too. Uh, and I see Richard Brooks in here as well in the chat session. So good to see those guys. Don't forget to share my videos with all your friends. Uh, and again, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you were here. Peace to everybody. And we got a good race for you in store tonight here with the Hypercar World Series at the Snake. That's the pain. Don't forget, coming up on Friday, we have the final race of the season in the High Octane Racing League Bushwhacker Series, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 70 lap race, and uh, that is a fun track, regardless of our cars you get out there on it. And what a way to finish out the season! It's been a great one. Well, IMS headed the way, 70 laps in the Bushwhacker Series. That'll be live right here on Turn Left TV on March the 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we're going to get up and get back after it right uh, the next day. On Saturday, March the 27th, we have Red Bull Ring in the High Octane Racing League GT3 Series. That'll be live right here on Turn Left TV at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That's right, Red Bull Ring. Very, very fun track. And uh, this GT3 Series has been a huge hit. So a 50-minute race headed your way live here on Turn Left TV, the High Octane Racing League GT3 Series. And I'm going to do a little driving on a Sunday. If you'd like to come out and join me, I'll be at Lucas Oil Raceway in the Modifieds. Second special event. Check that one out. The Sunday, March 28th. We race at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Forget to support ZiaComics.com, your nerd headquarters. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, all things comic related. Videos, comic books, action figures, autographs, you name it. These guys have it. ZiaComics.com, your nerd headquarters.
Taking about two and a half minutes left in the warm-up session. to get this thing started. Again, thanks for coming in. This is Turn Left TV. I'm your host, Heath Johnson. Got a good little uh, event for you here. Kind of a surprise event. Take a look at our side-by-side, -side, make sure that's working just fine. Looks like it's uh, everything looks good there for my end. All right, boys and girls, it is about that time, isn't it? The Hypercar World Series finishes off its season at Sepang. 75-minute race here tonight, brought to you live by Turn Left TV. It's the season finale. Who's going to catch Cliff Vandeven? All right, boys and girls, we uh, start to uh, load the grid here. We'll take a look at the starting order. Thomas Golem starts in P1, Cliff Vandev in second. Richie Tapple starts in the third position. Antti Rossi in the 27 car starts in fourth. Starting in the fifth position is Michael Brooks. Jos van der Steren starts in the sixth position. Dennis Vandeven will start seventh. Stefano de Nadal starts in the eighth position. Ninth, Christoph Rosinski, Giacomo Torre starts in 10th. Giuseppe Lapetra starts in the 11th position. And Jack G starts in 12th. Got a formation lap in 13th, Valerigo, Margarito, 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 Lorenzo Fanetto, 14th, Antonello Mastro, 15th, Manuela Pasella starts in the 16th position.
All right, this is going to be interesting here. So you want to make sure you uh, be very, very careful on this uh, on this start. And uh, these guys getting after it here. Be very, very careful here with the uh, wet conditions. Thomas Goalwam in first. Cliff Vandeven in the second position. In third is Richie Tapple. Can enter the back of Thomas Goalwam's machine at uh, Cliff Vandeven. MP2, Richie Tapple in third. Anti Rossi in the fourth position. Take a look at one of those other Team Future cars there, Anti Rossi, our second uh, car from uh, Team Future right now, running in fourth, just behind Richie Tappel, Michael Brooks behind him in the fifth position. A little bit sideways for Anti Rossi. Take a look at uh, Giacomo Atori. Right now running in the ninth position. A lot of water right here, man. I mean, this is heavy, heavy rain. As uh, Giacomo Atori picks up a spot there. Take a look at uh, Michael Brooks trying to make a pass on Richie Tapple. On the inside, and it uh, looks like uh, Michael Brooks is going to pull off that pass. Richie Tapple. Now falls back to the fifth position. Take a look at this battle here. Giacomo, Lepe, uh, excuse me, Giuseppe Lepetra and Antonello Mastro getting after it does. Giuseppe picks up the 11th position. G uh, Antonello Mastro back to 12th. Take a look at Cliff Vandeven. He's got a little bit of company there. Anti Rossi, I believe, in this mix. So uh, he is starting to work all over the back of uh, our race leader, and that is Thomas Golom. So Cliff Vandeven showing here why he is the points leader. Patience. So one, two there, Thomas Golem, and it looks like Cliff Vandeven here going to challenge uh, Thomas Golem into the turn. He's on the outside, not the preferred line. Is he going to do the little crossover move? He might have the uh, the right line here going into this side by side. This is for the race lead. Thomas Golem and uh, Cliff Vandeven. Cliff Vandeven picks up the lead here. Can he hold on? Coming off the turn, he swings a little bit wide. Thomas Golem's going to get beside him again. So good battle here between Thomas Golem and uh, Cliff Vandeven. Cliff Vandeven having to work here. As uh, Thomas Golom gets removed, they're getting back by. Still 1-2, Thomas Golom, Cliff Vandeven, Antti Rossi in third, Michael Brooks in the fourth position. Jos van der Steren is in fifth. That was a tight, tight battle, man. Stefano De Nadal. Picking up the seventh position. Giacomo Torre here uh, swinging a little bit wide. Giacomo in the puddles. Spins this car. Does he hold on to this thing? Looks like he does. Uh, but that thing came around there about sideways and uh, slowed him up. But uh, um, nonetheless, he gets back facing the right direction and continues on right now in the 14th position.
Take it just a moment to go here as that Cliff Vandevin getting by Thomas Golom. He had a word for it there. Thomas kept him honest. Uh, but now Cliff Vandevin takes over the lead, and uh, he is uh, opening up quite a bit of gap here. Valerio Margarito and uh, Lorenzo Fanato here getting out. Lorenzo Fanato coming off track as Valerio slips through. Oh, sideways here. Margarito is sideways as now Fanato might end up getting back by. I think Fanato came off track. So Fanetto gets that thing straightened back up. I think he actually came off track here. Take a look. Uh, Lore uh, this is Valerio Margarito. He's just going to get too much speed into this turn. It gets into the uh, puddles, I believe, and uh, spins this thing around. Take a look here. Right there, oh, he downshifts, and uh, man, it just causes that back into that car to spring loose. Richie Tapple here, and uh, Dennis Vandeman getting after it. Down the straight, into the right-hander. As uh, Dennis Vandeman takes over the seventh position, Richie Tapple now back to eighth. Manuel Pacella. Oh, a little bit heartbreaking right there. Comes around. Getting his car straightened back up. So uh, Manuel having a tough time here running in the 15th position. Just uh, lost a little traction there coming into that turn. Right now, Cliff Vandeven picking him up, putting him down. Running in P1, Thomas Golom's in the second position, 2.4 seconds back. Michael Brooks is in third. Running in the fourth position is uh, Jos van der Steren. Antti Rossi now back to fifth. Antti's had some trouble here. We'll take a look and see what happened to uh, Antti Rossi. Lost a couple positions. He's just coming off the turn, Antti Rossi. Gets a little bit loose and uh, gets that car around and uh, gives up a couple spots. This thing can reach out and bite you. Richie Tapple here trying to gain, uh, get that seven positions back. It looks like uh, he's going to get by Stefano De Nadal. See Stefano getting back on track. Uh, just behind, so uh, Richie Tapple now back up to the seventh position. Renzo Fanetto here having trouble, cannot get any grip in that car. That comes, uh, that car comes off, gets in the sand, and he retires his machine. It's a tough break there for uh, Renzo Fanetto. Take a look at Valerio Margarito. Here running in the 10th position. Good top 10 run for him. Just ahead of him uh, in the uh, ninth spot is uh, Christoph Rosinski. Christoph uh, in P9 in that two car. About nine, about 10 seconds behind uh, P8. So a little bit of work to do. Got a couple guys out of the race there, Jack G. And Lorenzo Fanetto, tough break for there for them. We'll take a look at Michael Brooks, another one of those team future races, racers uh, running third right now. So about 7.1 seconds behind P2. Got about a uh, 1.3 second gap on the fourth position car. That is uh, Jos van der Steren. 
and he has tightened it up here. I'll tell you what, Joost van der Steren is starting to climb all over the back of uh, Michael Brooks. So good battle right here. This is for P3, P4. So good battle here between uh, Joost van der Steren and Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks running in the third position. Joost van der Steren running in P4. to see how uh, wet this uh, track is. So on board here with uh, Joost van der Steren running in the fourth position. He working all over Michael Brooks right now. Take a look at our side-by-side -side view here as uh, Michael Brooks attempting to hold on, uh, hold off uh, Joseph van der Steren. Now we'll dive back there to Joseph van der Steren's machine, looking at the front of his uh, car at uh, Michael Brooks. P3, P4. Michael Brooks holding his own, that's for sure. So he sort of uh, had a, oh, just as I say that, he gets a little bit long right there in the turn. And now side by side. So good side by side battle now between the two of these guys. So Michael Brooks had a little trouble in the turn. Michael Brooks gets back by. Joost van der Steren can't not pull off that pass. He is still trying there. Michael Brooks gets a little bit long right there. Joost van der Steren goes off track to get around. Joost van der Steren makes the pass as Michael Brooks gets a little bit wide. Uh, sideways there going into the turn just could not he started hydroplaning and look at that Joost van der Steren's having some trouble so Michael Brooks going to get him back look at this battle right here over an hour left in racing and these guys are getting after it like it's a last laugh that was a heck of a uh, turn of events right there Watch this as Michael Brooks gets sideways. And uh, Joost van der Steren, Johnny on the spot, takes that spot back. But I'll tell you what, he cannot rest uh, because uh, he gets a little bit uh, off kilter, a little bit too fast coming around that turn. I mean, you really got to be gingerly about it. And then uh, Michael Brooks slips back through. Look at that. What a heck of a battle there between Michael Brooks and Joost van der Steren. Just a little bit ago, Mar Valerio Margarito picked up a spot as uh, Christoph uh, has some trouble there. So Christoph's come around. Let's see what happened to Christoph as he comes around this turn right here. He just gets a little bit uh, back into that car, comes around. You see uh, Valerio Margarito slipping through. Yeah, he's just hoping not to lose too many positions there. Okay, this is a battle here that just won't go away. Joost van der Steren still trying to uh, pick up this spot. Is Michael Brooks off track? I think Michael Brooks has had some trouble here. So he gets off into the kitty litter right there and uh, just keeps going, has no traction. He's going to give up that spot. So uh, Michael Brooks taking the long way around. Take a look at Thomas Golem here running in P2. You just see how slick it is. It's driving on snow right now almost. Uh, as many puddles you have on that track. How about Richie Tapple here running in the eighth position? 
This guy just will flat out drive anything, man. He gets out the GT3 cars uh, and uh, likes these Harper cars as well. So some great racing here on uh, out of the uh, number eighth place or the eighth place car, the 85, Richie Tapple. Yeah, he comes out there a little bit sideways. He hangs on to that thing. Richie Tapple hangs on for dear life. Coming around the turn, down the front stretch. 59 minutes left to go. Richie Tapple running in the eighth position. Take a look at Dennis Vandevin here running in P6. Right now, Dennis uh, just about six seconds behind uh, P5, Anti Rossi. It's about uh, 30 seconds behind the race leader, Cliff Vandevin. Take a look at Anti Rossi, one of those Team Future cars. In the 27 car, in fifth, four seconds behind. Michael Brooks. So that might tighten up here before we uh, before we get done with this thing. See, he's out of the front of his car. He's you can see Michael Brooks's machine. So just a tight battle here. About three and a half second gap between the two of those guys. Take a look at uh, Manuel Pacella. Here running in the 94 car in 13th. Being very, very careful. Come through a very difficult, very challenging track. Uh, section of the track, I should say. Here running in P13. Take a look at Antonello Mastro. Mastro coming around. Oh, not all the way around there. Maybe he holds on to it, gets in the grass. Trying to straighten this car back up, get him back out on track. Antonello Mastro running in the 12th position. Very challenging track here tonight. Giacomo Torre, he's had some trouble. Look at this, in a very, very challenging section here, man. That is just solid water, just big puddles of water. One big, ginormous lake. As uh, Giacomo Atori comes around and uh, keeps the car straight. We're running in P10 in about uh, five, uh, just under five and a half seconds to uh, P9. Cliff Vandevin uh, continuing to lead the charge here. Got about a nine and a half second lead over P2. I'm getting some word that P2 has had some trouble. See what happened here. Thomas Golom in the uh, second position. And again, oh, man, that might have been a little downshifty right there. Might have uh, downshifted a little bit too early. A little bit, yeah, a little bit too early. Had too much speed. And uh, gets that car sideways. Straightened back up. Holds on to P2. But uh, nonetheless, tough break there for Thomas Golom. These guys need some sunshine. You see a Valerio Margarito running in P9 coming off track. We'll take a look at uh, Christoph Rosinski here running in P11 in the O2, or, yeah, in the O2 car. 2.7 seconds. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, that's the way to take that turn right there. But not that one. <laughs> As Christoph comes off track uh, through the grass. Might have gotten a little mud on that car. Don't worry, it'll wash off. Probably in one lap. Stefano De Nadal here is going to try to pick up a spot. It's like uh, Dennis Vandevin's come around and Stefano gets around. They're side by side here. Can 
Stefano hold off uh, Dennis Vanneman. He spun that car. He wants back around. So Stefano now up to P6 as uh, Dennis Vandeven falls back to seven. I have a feeling this battle is not over. Take a look at Antti Rossi here in fourth. Michael Brooks in the fifth position. As the Antti Rossi picked up that spot. Take a look at that pass there. Antti Rossi getting by Michael Brooks, who's off track. So Antti Rossi uh, picks up that spot. So a uh, couple team future cars here battling it out. And these camera angles are wacky. There you go. Take a look at Valerio Margarito. Valerio and uh, Giacomo Atori there pretty close. On board here with that Valerio Margarito. Valerio right now running in the ninth position. Giacomo Atori just behind him in 10th is really, really uh, trying to breathe down his neck there. Uh, looks like uh, Valerio there having a little trouble getting into the turn here. Let's see. Here we go. Pass for the or pass for uh, position as Giacomo Atori now picking up the ninth position. He's going to be able to hold on to it coming off the turn. It's a drag race. He ends up getting that spot. So uh, Giacomo Atori. Set Valerio Margarito up here and uh, pulled off that pass and now up to P9 as uh, Margarito back to 10th. Take a look at Stefano De Nadal here running in the... Uh, Sixth position just behind him is that Dennis Vandeven. So good battle here. Take a look at the uh, side by side view. It's uh, Stefano Nade on that day. Nadal running in P6, P7 on board here with him. Dennis Vandeven trying to climb back up there and uh, get around. Take over P6. Got a little bit of a lap traffic in the way. Coming up. Christoph Rusinski in the 11th position. Have a little trouble there, kind of cutting that turn and uh, spins that car, gets it straightened back up. But gonna lose a little time there, not, not position. Looks like Antonello Mastro might end up getting by. We'll take a look here. This is that spin uh, down the straight. Oh, look at that. Uh, Somebody was sideways on the track here. Who the heck was that? That was Rosinski. Uh, Mastro got into Rosinski. So we'll take a look at what happened to Rosinski. He spins right here. I don't know what. Uh, 
missed a shift or something, and then there's going to be some contact, I believe. Mastro is going to get into sight of him, and then uh, continues on. Go back up here with our race leader, Cliff Vandeman. It has been no nonsense for him. He had a little fight there for a while to uh, gain P1, but now he is in P1. Cliff Vandeman, uh, the points leader, coming into tonight, doing everything he needs to do to win this championship. Looks like the rain has uh, sort of subsided a little bit, but the track is very, very wet as you can see. Take a look at Thomas Golem. He and uh, Joost van der Steer in here having a pretty good battle. See uh, Joost van der Steer out of the back of uh, Thomas Golem's machine. Thomas running in P2. Well, these guys are about 20 seconds off the uh, race lead. So good tight battle here for P2. Joost van der Steer running in the third position. Thomas Golom is in second. So right now looking at about a second separating the two of those guys. So Van der Steeren trying to uh, maybe hope for a little bit of bad luck out of uh, the second place car, Thomas Golom, the old five car. Trying to tighten that back up, but I tell you what, Thomas doesn't make a lot of mistakes. When he does, he's able to sort of recover. One of the best in the business about recovery. Always a factor to win the race, too, so we got to think about that. Uh, Thomas Golem does a lot for Sim Racing Mania, uh, but also gets out here and drives a fantastic car as well. So, so good battle there between P2, P3. Anti Rossi running in the fourth position. You got 12.1 seconds behind P3. Michael Brooks uh, running in P5. Stefano De Nadal running in the sixth position. Dennis Vanneven is in seventh. Richie Tapple eighth. Giacomo Torre is ninth. Valerio Margarito is tenth. Again, we want to kind of take a look at uh, where the uh, standings are coming into tonight's race. Cliff Vandeven, pretty solid lead there, that 21 team. 299 points. Dennis Vandeven in second. Giacomo Atori is in uh, third. Richie Tapple fourth. Thomas Golom fifth in points coming into tonight. So really think when you look at those top three, considering the points values here, Cliff Vandeven is going to really have to have a huge problem here, and I think there are too many people out of the race now for that to be fundamentally uh, uh, an issue. So I think Cliff Vandeman's going to end up winning this championship. Dennis Vandeman and uh, Gio Como and Torrey, those guys are definitely going to be battling for uh, that P2. But right now it looks like uh, Dennis Vandeman's got a slight lead over Atori. So uh, Vandeman running in the seventh position. Atori right now running in ninth. Richie Tapple fourth in points. He's running in the eighth position tonight. Got an outside shot of making uh, making some noise there and maybe getting on the podium. Thomas Golom, mathematically, I think uh, you can pretty much say that he's uh, stuck there in that either fifth or below. But right now, uh, best you can do, I think, is a fifth place finish. Take a look at Joost van der Steeren here in the. Uh, 12 car running in the third position, still working on Thomas Golom. It's probably the tightest battle on the track right now between P2, P3.
Dennis Van have been had some issues here, look like. Uh, so he's gotten it. Man, he was just got entry into that turn. was a little wacky. We've seen a lot of people have trouble on this turn. I say he spins that car, gets the thing straightened back up. It doesn't lose any positions. Uh, but if you saw, man, I mean, just entering the turn, he was already off the side right there. Just a bad entry right there. Very, very wild, uh, wild angle to get into that turn. And then, uh, of course, it's in the, uh, the puddles and uh, spins that car off the track, gets it straightened back up. Look at this ba battle here. Christoph Rosicki, Antonello Mastro here battling it out. Good side-by-side -side battle here. Antonello Mastro muscled him his way back by. Kristoff still working on the back of Antonello Mastro. You see breaking right there and downshifting. That car wants to break loose. And uh, can he get underneath Antonello Mastro? Mastro gets the wide shot off the uh, turn and is able to get a little bit of grip there and shoots out uh, back up there to 11th. So Kristoff has to settle for 12. Good battle there between the two of those guys. Take a look at Thomas Golom. Those fans are staring just behind him, so another tight battle there, P2, P3. Take a look at Giacomo Torre running in the ninth position. He comes in tonight in third in points. Right now having a uh, ninth place run, trying to keep that car in the top 10, get a good play, uh, good finish here and solidify his uh, third place finish in the championship. He might have a chance of uh, beating Dennis Vandeven if Dennis Vandeven has some more trouble there. So Dennis right, right now running in the seventh position. We'll take a look at Dennis Vandeven in P7. He comes in tonight in the second position in points. Right now the 84 car, uh, 8.2 seconds, 8.5 seconds or so behind uh, our fifth place, our sixth place car, Stefano De Nadal. We'll take a look at P6, Stefano De Nadal. And a pretty uh, pretty close battle there between he and Antti, uh, excuse me, he and Michael Brooks. About 3.5 seconds gap between the two of those guys with uh, 42 minutes left to go. Take a look at uh, Michael Brooks. That Team Future number 08 car running in the fifth position. Tell you what, man, this battle just will not go away. Kristoff Rosinski, Antonello Mastro. Antonello pulls over there and uh, lets him go. Maybe he's just trying to hold on, keep that thing on the track. But uh, Kristoff Rosinski now, now picks up P11. As Antonello Mastro now back to 12th. This battle is not over. Looking out of the back of Rosinski's car. Add to Antonello. Antonello did a great job of just hang it, hanging on to that thing. Figures he's going to give it another shot here as uh, Rosinski in P11. And you got to bank on these guys making trouble, uh, having trouble. I mean, every single driver out here is going to miss a few turns, especially with the conditions. Take a look at Richie Tapple. Right now, Richie running in the eighth position. You get about uh, 12 and a half or so seconds between he and P7. It has been all Cliff Vandeven, and it sounds to me like that's the way it's been this season. When I look at the number of wins here, it looks like uh, five wins coming into tonight for Cliff Vandeven. So this guy has been dominant. Which is probably why he comes in with a 247-point lead. He even missed the first race of the season. G. 
Giacomo Torres had some trouble there. I'm not sure what happened to Giacomo. We'll see what happened to Giacomo Torre. A little bit loose right here. He comes around. Oh, he spins his car just into the kitty litter. And I think he's just fed up uh, and retires his machine. That is a shame right there. And we'll take another look at this. Is uh, Just gets this thing. Oh, it just snaps around on him right there. And uh, gets into the kitty litter. And uh, he decides that uh, he is going to uh, retire that machine. Take a look at Valerio Margarito running in the ninth position. Got a pass here. Uh, looks like uh, Dennis Vandeven picking up the sixth position as I think uh, Antti Rossi's on pit lane. It's Antti Rossi making a pit stop here as Dennis Vandeven picking up that spot. See uh, Rossi finishing up his pit stop. Now back to eight in that 27 car. So could we start seeing some pit stops here? 38 minutes, uh, just under 39 minutes left to go. As you see Antti Rossi rejoining the uh, racing surface. 27 seconds back to P7. Dennis Vandeman misses that turn. See, he comes to a stop to keep from getting into the, uh, the mud. Take a look at Michael Brooks here. Michael Brooks. Right now running in the fourth position. Who's having some trouble there? Comes off track. Uh, so a little tough. Deal for Michael Brooks as he uh, misses that turn, comes off track, but uh, keeps that thing pointed in the right direction, doesn't come all the way around. Antonello Mastro here running in P10. Looks like Kristoff. Uh, Rusinski on pit lane as Antonello Mastro now in 10th in the 03 car. See Thomas Goholm and uh, Jos van der Steren going by. It's a good tight battle there between the two of those guys. Take a look here uh, a little bit later as uh, I think uh, Thomas Golem's had some trouble as Jos van der gets by. So Thomas Golem might have had some trouble there. Take a look and see what happened. It was, uh, here we go. See uh, Thomas Golem, they get a little bit squirrely as uh, Jos van der Seren, uh sneaks by. Take a look out of the front of his machine here. Uh, see Thomas having a little bit of trouble right there. He just misses that turn as uh, van der Steren getting by. Thomas Golem keeps the thing pointed the way he needs to go. Boy, not without a little bit of a... Uh, a little extracurricular. See, right here, he's off track, and uh, man, he does a great Oh, working that wheel right there is that extracurricular there, working that wheel and keep that thing pointed in the right direction. Richie Tapple also coming around. Great looking pace game right there, just showing it off for us. A little bit of raindrops on it, but uh, looking pretty good, running in the seventh position.
Cliff Vandeven, the race leader here with 34 minutes left to go. Jos van der Stenger now up to P2. P3 is Thomas Gowell. Michael Brooks now in the fourth position. Stefano De Nadal in fifth. Dennis van der Ven running in the uh, sixth position. Richie Tapple seventh. Anti Rossi eighth. Valerio Margarito is in ninth. Rounding out the top ten is Antonello Mastro. On board here with the race leader. You see very, very careful around those, uh, around the turn in the puddles there. Valerio Margarito making a pit stop. Here on uh, just under 34 minutes left to go is Valerio on pit lane. The uh, Valerio Margarito coming back out on track. And I think uh, Thomas Golem's on pit lane as well. You see Thomas Golem, uh, our P3 driver, on pit lane here with uh, just about 33 minutes left to go. Giving up some spots there as Thomas Golom to make that that uh, pit stop there. Now back to six. Now the thing is, when you come back out off pit lane, you're on fresh tires, but you got to make sure you get back in the rhythm here and try to deal with the conditions. And they are rough. Richie Tapple on pit lane. Nancy Rossi now up to the seventh position. Richie Tapple's on pit lane, so Anti Rossi picks up a spot. Take a look at Stefano De Nadal running in P4. Dennis Van have been running in the fifth position, rounding out the top five. Right now, Dennis shown uh, 80 seconds back. That's a minute 20 if you're... Uh, if you're keeping track, Jos van der Steen is on pit lane. So uh, our P2 car is on pit lane taking service. And I got to think that Cliff is probably not going to wait too much longer here to come down pit lane. Just have a feeling that's going to be the case here. As we take a look at... Uh, Cliff Vandev in the race later as Jos van der Steen taking service. Stefano De Nadal now finishing up that pit stop, coming back out on track here with 30 minutes left to go. Mm -hmm. 
We'll take a look at Christoph Rosinski now in the top 10. We've had uh, quite a few drivers that have retired their machines. It's kind of a shame there, but uh, war of attrition. Christoph looking at a top 10 finish here. Had some more to do, maybe to gain a couple more spots, but uh, he and Valerio Margarito, Richie Tapple all one lap down. And he comes off track there just a little bit, so uh, Christoph Rosinski in the grass. Valerio Margarito is that P9 driver in the 17 car. Just ahead of him is uh, see Michael Brooks right there running in the second position, our P2 driver. We'll take a look at Michael Brooks running in second. Good run here for Michael Brooks. I had a feeling uh, that he was really going to uh, have a positive race here at this track. He is one, I'll tell you what, man, uh, when the conditions are messy, Michael Brooks seems to rise to the top. He has that car in the second position. Comes off track there a little bit, and uh, Valerio just behind him. Not for position. Valerio running in the ninth spot. Stefano De Nadal, Dennis Vandeven both coming down pit lane. De Nadal on pit lane. Looking out of the front of his car, Dennis Vandeven's tucking into his pit stall. Dennis Vanneven finishing up his pit stop. Coming back out on track. A little bit better pit stop there for Vanneven uh, than Stefano de Nadal. So Nadal actually had his pit, uh, his car in the pit box there a little bit sooner, but uh, they had some damage he's getting repaired. I'm not sure. Nonetheless, lost a spot on pit lane. So Stefano de Nadal still, now he's just coming off pit lane. So on board here with uh, Dennis Vanneven. Take a look at Thomas Golom running in P3 in the five car, the 05 car. Thomas comes in tonight fifth in points, 177 points this season for him. Don't really think that, uh, you know, his battle, I think, is not so much with, uh, you know, one of these other guys on the grid because he's, he's really, uh, excuse me, in P4, 3, 2, or 1, so he can't break into that top four. But uh, Christoph Rosinski is within striking distance. So you see uh, fourth and fifth, excuse me, uh, fifth and sixth, Thomas Golom, Christoph Rosinski, just five points separating the two. Don't forget about Antti Rossi, too. Antti Rossi running in the fifth position right now. Take a look at Antti Rossi running in P5. Actually, P4, to take that back. He is in fourth, so a pretty good run here for him, that Team Future machine. Thomas Golom now in second. Vander Steren in third, Antti Rossi fourth, Michael Brooks fifth. Rosinski getting into this little carousel here. And this car coming around. Doesn't come all the way around there, but gets sideways.
Rain in a little bit less than was earlier. But still, a lot of ponding on the uh, racing surface. Take a look at Valerio Margarito. A lot of speed here. And oh, that thing doesn't get any grip. It gets into the puddle. Gets it back into that thing, squirreled around, and uh, straightens it back up. I think Rosinski's had some more trouble. Oh, man, that thing just caught. And then he gets into the uh, onto the curb, that slick portion, and then gets into the grass. He is all over the place right now. Back on track, running in P10. Vanderstinger now up to the third position as Michael Brooks came down pit lane. So Jos Vanderstinger is now in the third position. In P4, Antti Rossi. Rossi uh, running in P4, about uh, 11 seconds ahead of uh, P5. Cliff Vandeven on pit lane here, so our, our race leader has got such a huge lead. He's on uh, pit lane. Not too much to worry about, I think, for him. Thomas go on in P2. Vandeven finishing up that pit stop, coming back out on track. Pretty gangster when you can come down pit lane, come off pit lane after pretty much everybody else's pit made a pit stop and still be the race leader here. That says a lot about uh, where Cliff Vandeven is on the track. Nonetheless, no, uh, nothing really to take away from the job that Thomas Golem has, been, uh, has done here because he's had a few incidents but has been able to bounce back and finds himself in P2. Running in the third position is Jos van der Steren. 7.8 seconds behind Thomas Golem. That's a heck of a graphic right there, isn't it? That's a pretty horrible graphic. See Antti Rossi there, about a ten and a half second lead over P5. Michael Brooks, he's in a pretty comfortable position right now. Got about uh, 11 seconds between he and P3, so he's got some work to do to try to catch up to uh, Jos van der Steren. Jos van der Steren running in the uh, third position, in, uh, about see about 5.9 seconds behind. Uh, P2, actually. So if we can't get a uh, updated 
There we go. Uh, that's not the one we want. He's having a little trouble there. You see the rain starting to come down a little harder now. So the rain coming back. It's been sprinkling there for a little while. Richie Tapple getting by as Stefano De Nadal's had some trouble. Let's see what happened to uh, De Nadal. Oh, man, he just carries a lot of speed there. Again, the rain has picked up pretty uh, significantly. And uh, he's going to end up losing a position here, you see, as he's trying to get that car straightened up. He's going to end up losing a spot. Take a look and see what Richie Tapple saw on the back on the front of his car there as uh, Stefano Dana Dow gets back out on track. As he makes that that uh, pass there for P7. A bit of uh, Jos van der Steer and Valerio Margarito there racing side by side. Now Valerio shown in the ninth position. Jos van der Steer is in third. Getting by. That might have been a little bit of a wave by there. As Margarito missed that turn, looking out of the back of uh, Jos van der Steer's machine. Valerio Margarito coming down the front stretch as well. Sixteen minutes left to go. Jos van der Steen running in P3. Pretty good run for, here for him. Cliff Vandeven is the race leader. 46 second lead after making pit stop. Jos van der Steen in. Uh, Thomas Gollum's in second. Jos van der Steen third. Antti Rossi in fourth. Michael Brooks is fifth. Christoph Rosinski. And uh, coming around all the way around, pretty much all the way around there is Rosinski. Have a little trouble there, and you see those guys going through, P8 going through. There's a Stefano De Nadal. So Rosinski getting his car back out on track. So P1, Cliff Vandeven has uh, gained the lead early. Thomas Golem qualified in P1, but Cliff Vandeven did, wasted no time and got around Thomas Golem. Now, credit to Thomas, he really uh, put up a good fight. But uh, after that, Cliff Vandeven just took off. And this has been a you know, fast car, great driver.
but also consistency. I mean, really very, very few problems here for Cliff Vandeman. And I'm not trying to jinx it or anything, but uh, he's had very few problems here tonight. Some of these other guys have had a lot of trouble here trying to bounce back. Thomas Golem, we know we've seen him come around a couple of times, but he has to be feel pretty fortunate right now where he's at. He's in the second position. Again, comes in tonight, uh, fifth in points. Jonas van der Steren running in P3. Again, a lot of rain now hitting the uh, pavement. Is this car starting to uh, get a little bit loose? Sliding around on these puddles. We thought the uh, racing surface was going to dry up there just a little bit, but now we've got a second batch of rain. Take a look at Dennis Vanneven here running in the uh, sixth position. Haven't talked about him lately, but uh, he's having a pretty solid run here. Now he comes in tonight second in points. Giacomo Atori just ahead of him in point, or excuse me, uh, just behind him in points, but uh, Giacomo has retired his machine. He's going to finish in the 11th position, so I think uh, Dennis Vanneven pretty safe to say that he's going to hold on to uh, P2 in points. Pretty good run here for him, running in P6. Got Michael Brooks running in the fifth position. Uh, see Valerio Margarito, uh, ninth position car just ahead of him. Looking out of the front of Michael Brooks' machine, you see that spray there coming off P9. Valerio Margarito, Michael Brooks, pretty fast car here tonight, running in the fifth spot. So good run here for Michael Brooks. Margarito looking out of the back of his car at Michael Brooks, our uh, fifth place driver. Valerigo right now running in the ninth position. So about uh, just under 12 minutes left to go. We see Valerio Margarito running in P9. Just behind him, P5. Michael Brooks, Valerio gets over and lets Michael Brooks go. Not savvy driving right there, man. That is a lot of laps. A lot of uh, learning about race etiquette. He realizes he's not racing for position. And lets him go. So Valerio doing Michael Brooks a salad right there and letting him go. Stefano De Nadal running in P8. In a little bit loose. Coming around. Does he come all the way around? I think he gets that thing pointed... Uh, straight again and uh, back off to the races. Didn't lose a position. Took a look at Antti Rossi running in fourth. One of those team future cars, number 27. Coming off the final turn here to uh, cross the start finish line. Just under 11 minutes left to go. Richie Tapple here running in uh, P7. Richie in the 85 car. Richie comes in tonight, fourth in points. 217 points. Thirty-seven uh, points. Excuse me, twenty-seven points off uh, P9. 
So he's got a little work to do there if he's going to uh, – he might actually end up getting P3, to be honest with you, because uh, Giacomo is out of the race. Tapple is going to have to do a lot of things right uh, to get enough spots between he and where Giacomo finished. He finished in the 11th position. Tapple running in the 7th spot. Going to have to do a lot of things, uh, gain a lot of positions here, I think, in order to overtake Giacomo Torre in points. Take a look at the Christoph Rusinski here running in the top 10. P10, two laps down in the 0-2 car. So a little bit of traffic there. P8 car just behind him. And it's Stefano De Nadal trying to get by Rusinski. Going to go by there, so uh, Day Nadal ends up uh, picking up that position on the track, not on the grid. How much he had to turn that wheel to keep that car from uh, going straight. Nobody's had the answer for Cliff Vandeman, that's for sure, and I'm not even sure the track has had the answer for him. He is taming the serpent of Sepang. Here with eight minutes left to go. And almost a minute lead over our uh, second place car, Thomas Golom. Ghost Van Der in third, Antti Rossi fourth, Michael Brooks in fifth. Richie Tapo here in the seventh position. He's got a heck of a lot of speed getting into this turn. When he comes around, he's in the kitty litter. Doesn't lose a position on the track, but uh, definitely going to throw off your rhythm here in that 85 car. Still in the seventh position. Stefano De Nadal back to, is in the eighth spot. An 18-second gap there to uh, catch P7. So that's definitely helped his chances out. Rusinski here is having some trouble. Just, oh, he downshifts right there. He downshifts, breaks the car loose. Take a look at the Dennis Van have been running in P6. About 24 and a half seconds before he gets P5. A little bit of work for him. Remember, Dennis comes in tonight in second in points. He's got that uh, sewn up there because uh, Giacomo Torre is not going to be able to catch him, uh, finishing in the 11th position. So uh, Dennis Van at least gets uh, second position. Going to finish runner up in points. Just under six minutes left to go. Take a look at Michael Brooks, one of those team future cars. This battle is tied here between Antti Rossi, Michael Brooks. Antti Rossi is in the seventh position, excuse me, in fourth as Michael Brooks in fifth. this battle here this is four positions so uh here we are with just five minutes left to go we've got a battle for fourth on board here with michael brooks 
You look at Antti Rossi in that left side screen. So a couple teammates here battling it out uh, with just under five minutes left to go. Antti Rossi comes in tonight, seventh in points. This is tight. Michael Brooks, P16, uh, coming into tonight's race. So we would be kind of curious to see how these teammates race each other. As Andy Rossi definitely in a fight with Kristoff for uh, points. Uh, Andy uh, pretty much has that right now, but points uh, in the uh, season standings coming into tonight's race. Right now, Antti Rossi holding off Michael Brooks, but Michael Brooks on his way, and it's getting tight right here. Looking out of the back of um, Antti Rossi's machine, Michael Brooks running in the fifth position, all over the back of him right now. It is tight. I mean, just one missed turn, and uh, Michael Brooks is going to end up taking that spot. Anthony Rossi there opening up a little bit of a gap now. Three minutes left to go. Can Anthony Rossi hold off Michael Brooks? Andy running in the fourth position. Michael Brooks is in fifth. Somebody's lit a, lit a fire under Antti Rossi. Richie Kappel getting another spot is Dennis Vandeven. Dennis Vandeven giving up a spot. Not sure what happened there to uh, Dennis Vandeven was on pit lane it looks like and uh, he ends up losing a spot here late in the race. Hey, right now, man, uh, Antti Rossi, Michael Brooks battling it out as uh, Cliff Vandeven on his way of winning not only the championship, but this race. Great little battle here. This is for fourth place. Antti Rossi has it. Michael Brooks wants it. I'm sure there's a be be some jokes made about that comment right there <laughs> in the chat session afterwards. Michael Brooks doing everything he can to try to uh, get to Antti Rossi. As uh, Cliff Vandeven, he is on his way to victory. Just about a minute left to go. So looks like we're going to get one more lap in. Is that the, is that about right? It looks like it is. We're going to get another lap in here at Sepang. Not wet enough. We're going to get a little bit more wet. Wetter. Wettest. <laughs> Thomas Golom here holding on to the second position. But I tell you what, Jos van der Steren is there. So uh, that's a good battle there for P2. So we got a good battle there for P4, Michael Brooks, Antti Rossi, 
Couple seconds separating the two. Thomas Gomom here trying to hold on. He's got another lap, trying to hold off Joost van der Steren. As Cliff Vandeven trying to put this to rest. Cap off a championship with a victory. And I talked to uh, Thomas Golem a little bit earlier this week, and I said, hey, tell me what this championship's going to be about. And he said, Cliff's going to win this championship. Uh, he was pretty confident given the points lead coming in and uh, just given uh, Cliff's ability and uh, knowing how he does on really, really tough circuits. And Cliff Vandeven has not disappointed. He has been pretty much flawless here tonight in very, very challenging conditions. So Cliff Vandeven coming down the final stretch. Going to take this race win. Gets around the carousel here. I don't know if you want to call that the carousel, but uh, nonetheless, here's the final stretch. As Cliff Vandeman comes off that final turn and gets the race win here at Sepang. So congratulations to him. Thomas Golom trying to hold off that charge. He's got uh, Jos van der Steren behind him about three seconds. Anti Rossi, Michael Brooks battling it out as well. Look at this battle right here. Michael Brooks, Anti Rossi. This is going to come down to the wire here. Michael Brooks, he's going to try to pick up this spot. Anti Rossi now in fifth as Michael Brooks gets that spot. So a late race pass from Michael Brooks. Can he hold off a charge by Anti Rossi? This is for the fourth position. A couple teammates here battling it out. Heck of a run there. Headed into the carousel here. Michael Brooks got around Anti Rossi. A little bit of traffic in the way here. Can Michael Brooks hold off Anti Rossi? Anti Rossi gets a good jump off the turn. Oh, they're all going to finish together here. How about that? Wow, that's, uh, that's sweet. Hey, get a room. Get a room. <laughs> get a room. Right there. There you go. Knock one of them out. Lock them out. <laughs> so Cliff Vandeven gets the win. What a race for him, huh? So congratulations to Cliff Vandeven on uh, getting that race win. We'll take a look at the uh, results here. Cliff Vandeven gets the win. Jos van der Steren finishes in second. Thomas Golom finished in the third position. Anti Rossi fourth. Michael Brooks finished in the fifth position. Richie Tappel finishes sixth. Danis Vandeven finishes in the seventh position. Stefano De Nadal finishes in the eighth spot. Valerio Margarito finishes in ninth. In tenth is Christoph Rosinski. So good little run there uh, as uh, Dennis Vandeven gets the win. We'll take a look at the uh, back half here as uh, Giacomo Torre finishes in the 11th position. Manuel, Manuel Pasella uh, finishes in 12th. Giuseppe LaPetra finishes in the uh, 13th position. Lorenzo Fanetto finishes 14th. Jack G finishes in the 15th position. And Antonello Mastro finishes in 16th.
Oh! Spell his name wrong. There we go. Club Vanovan getting the race win here at Sepang. So congratulations to him. He was dominant. I mean, my heavens, man. Could you get any more dominant of, a, dominant of an effort here tonight than what Cliff Vanovan put on? That was an absolute clinic. We'll uh, get up here in the broadcast booth in just a second. All right, uh, we're going to get some uh, get some guys uh, up in the booth, let them dry themselves off a little bit. Get these guys up in the booth and uh, have a little chat with them. Always a lively chat with the Sim Racing Mania boys. Don't forget to join us on Friday, March the 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern time for Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the High Octane Racing League Bushwhacker Series. 70 laps headed your way and a great, great uh, series, great season. It has been in the final race of the season. Who's gonna take home the uh, championship? It's anybody's guess at this point. It could come down to the last lap in this series. And then on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be back at it with the High Octane Racing League GT3 Series right here on Turn Left TV, Red Bull Ring. 50-minute race in that great series. It's been a very, very fun one. So a lot of guys from around the world here joining us uh, in this series. So uh, don't forget to check it out. It'll be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Turn Left TV. That's the High Octane Racing League GT3 Series.
And then on Saturday after or Saturday evening, 250 laps from Martinsville, some classic short track action headed your way in the Saturday Night Thunder. Yep, that's right. These cup cars are going to be getting after it for race number seven in that first season of 2021 in the High Octane Racing League Saturday Night Thunder. It'll be live right here on Turn Left TV. Racing starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 250 laps from the paperclip Martinsville Speedway. All right, hey, joining us up here in the booth, we got Jos van der Steren, Michael Brooks, Thomas Goholm. What's up, guys? Hi, hey. Hello, Heath. Heath. Who called for the rain? Uh, Thomas. Thomas loves the rain. <laughs> well, not as much as Cliff, apparently. Yeah, definitely. Cliff pushed to talk. Yeah, so the weather was tricky, especially in this car. It's not easy, easy to drive uh, in the rain with this car. It's very understeery and oversteery at the same time. So it's hard to control, especially here in Malaysia, in Sepang. It was, it was tricky, tricky to drive. Yeah, this track is hard enough just in dry conditions, but to throw some rain down on there and then the amount of rain that you were getting on there, uh, man, I, it was really hard to hang on to the thing. It was, uh, but it wasn't a surprise. It's, it's like monsoon, uh, monsoon time in Malaysia. So <laughs> I think everyone remembers 2009, for example, in F1, uh, when the race was red flagged. It was more or less the same, uh, the same time in the year. So, so we expected rain, uh, but to be honest, it was a surprise because uh, the practice was dry. So, uh, yeah. So, so it, it was a surprising quality. In Poly, I was very lucky. Cliff was very lucky too, I think. Uh, we started to drive very early. And basically, we ended our laps before track gets too wet <laughs> to, to drive on slicks. Uh, but yeah, in the, in the race, conditions were steady. That was that was a good thing. Uh, we also finished there, and you and... Uh... And Thomas had a pretty good battle there toward the end. Talk about the race and uh, Thomas for uh, P2. Yeah, it was very nice. Nice battle uh, with Thomas. Yes, I could uh, keep pushing I could, and he made a mistake in the first stint. And then he gets, uh, after the, the stint, he came back uh, eight seconds in front of me because he had uh, less fuel to, to add to his car. But uh, at the last, he made a mistake in the last corner. Unfortunately for him, for me, I was like very lucky, of course. So I got a P2 for the first time here. So I'm glad. Oh, so congratulations for Peter then. But uh, there is a good thing. Because of that, we are able to make a uh, lemon style finish with Michael and Nanti. I hope that you, you catch that on broadcast. You mean the uh, the three wide finish? Yes. It, w it was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, on the broadcast, I said, get a room. <laughs> uh, well, maybe uh, when pandemic will end. Why not? Well, really, there Looked were, there were some good battles yeah. there. Uh, Antti and, and uh, Andy Rossi and then Michael Brooks, Cliff, you guys were having a pretty good. You need to set push to talk with you, too. You know, uh, Michael, you and Antti Rossi had a pretty good battle at the end as well. Uh, talk about that battle you guys had. I hate. Um... Yeah, normally I am monumentally terrible in the rain, so I expected to crash off and die about every lap of the race. But um, yeah, towards the end, I, 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 pit, I, I stayed out as long as I could on the old tyres before I put it onto the new ones. Cause I knew 
uh, Antti was going to struggle on his tyres towards the end, which he did. And then he had a couple, he had a couple of offs and a spin. So I was right with him. Like, I was catching him slowly anyway, but his spin really brought me in the game. But I just couldn't think quite the pace to make a move on him because like you can push, but pushing a little bit more in the way is like you just go off. You just I didn't quite have the grip I needed to try and move on him, but it was a good battle regardless towards the end. They made that little Le Mans finish at the end. And uh, I did. I, I would take him. I would take him on the last lap, but he came to let me by. I came to it with skill, but we'll disagree on that. <laughs> and, um, it was a fun finish, regardless. And I also got to, to punt to my up just after the race ended, which was nice. Still all fun at the end. Well, it looked like going into the turns, they're just at some point, the cars were just not. Uh, I mean, it was just hydro planning, and you were just on for a ride at that point. Yeah, like um, the the, the, the the way the center works is like. If, it's, if you compare it to like an LMP1 car, it's the, the, the center is just front end limited anyway. Like if you could, if I could maybe wave a magic wand and give it out of front more front and rear or rear, rear grip, I'd give it more front grip in a heartbeat. So in a way, it just amplifies that and it's just understeer city and you lock up the brakes. And especially that like me and Anti were struggling because we didn't, our car wasn't really set up for wet. We just set it up for the dry, which didn't help either. So I think that's how Joss was able to. We got, I heard Anti on our team radio complaining, but why is Josh so fast in this corner all <laughs> the race? Yeah, I, know, I, each other. I, each have other. To, I have to say that Jos was very fast on exit of the corners. I don't know how he did that. If I, that me meter, meter. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it was seriously impressive, especially from those like slow turns. Uh, sector 1, for example, it was it was really, really fast by uh, by Jos. Just breaking tiptoeing. And there was a dry setup with rain tire, so I had to be very careful, but uh, I don't know what I did then. Something good, I think. Very good, mate. Very good job, yours. <laughs> well, Cliff, uh, yeah, winning the race. Uh, Cliff, also, you win the race by yours. Cliff is still celebrating, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I have to say that congratulations to Cliff for championship. But one more important thing, I think. I hope so more important thing is that podium in championship is taken only by one team which is TSG Motorsports or former Ferro racing team yes Cliff Dennis Richie very good job thank you thank you thanks thanks well, Cliff, uh, what a way to top off a championship with the race win. And it seemed to me, uh, as I was watching these guys, it was just who was going to have the fewest mistakes. And I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I you maybe missed a few breaking points, but I didn't see your car coming around. I really didn't see any mistakes out of you tonight. Uh, and coming into tonight, I mean, uh, you know, it was really, Thomas had said, you know, Cliff's probably going to win this championship. I looked at the points battle. Dennis had a very, very outside shot, but uh, you had to feel pretty comfortable coming into tonight, even given the weather conditions. Yeah, for sure, for sure. At first, I uh, indeed I had some mistakes. I wanted to cruise, but then I thought, no, I want to win. I want to try to win. Well, you win uh, and win in big fashion too. Just a huge race win for you. Uh, and this track is challenging, man. I got out and ran a few laps just to, you know, get my feet wet, so to speak. And uh, I, I couldn't get out of the car fast enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, last week we had rain at Spa, but that was amazing. And here it was uh, yeah, difficult, extremely difficult in the rain. It was a little bit different because on Spa we had a track that was drying out during the race. He was just steady during the race, steady wet. Yeah, that's true. But but at some point we also had a very wet track at uh, at Spa, and still everything was okay. So yeah, on Spa yeah, it was but... yeah. I also think here. that in Spa, at least I had a proper wet setup, or at least like few tweaks to make the tires warm up properly and stuff like that. And this was just like horrible. <laughs> well, yeah. Ante, you fin end up finishing sixth in points in the season. Uh, talk about how that season went for you. Uh, pretty good run, though, with a sixth-place finish. Yeah, I, I think I missed, like, three races throughout the season. So it, after the first miss, I kind of knew that I'm not, like, battling for the top three anyways. 
So it kind of killed the season for me. But yeah, I, we had like few really great races and few not so great ones. <laughs> but yeah, and to, to be honest, I'm just like, happy that this is over because I never liked this card too much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, have I have a word for it. I have a word for it. For it. Uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah, on broadcast. I know, I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> Let's yeah, just say it's not broadcast. You, you can say thesis box, maybe, in broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to say that second part of the season was much better for our team. Uh, for me, Michael and Antti. Uh, me and Antti missed three races, I think. Michael missed two, if I'm right. Uh, but the second part of the season was very good podium in every race, so uh, let's say that's, that season for us was good. Well, Dennis Vandeven, you had a great uh, season here, finishing second in points, and if you're going to lose to somebody, I guess it might as well be your brother. Hi, Eve. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, tried to be as steady as I could, and uh, I wasn't going to catch Cliff uh, in a million miles anyway, so... Uh, Tried to consolidate my points and uh, did the best I could and uh, finished up in second, so uh, happy with that. Richie Tapple, you had a pretty good uh, season here, finishing third in points. Yes, it went well. I made uh, a few mistakes in the competition, and yeah, uh, then it's nice to finish as third in the championship. <coughs> Well, I'd say if anybody could make enough mistakes and, uh, and still finish uh, in the sixth position, I'd seem pretty happy about that because uh, you did have a pretty challenging uh, evening, but still managed to come away with a, a sixth place finish is pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, joining us also in here is uh, Stefano De Nadal, uh finishing in eighth position tonight. Uh, talk a little bit about how, how your race went. No, push the talk, mate. You haven't got it enabled yet. Ah, uh, okay. I think he might be texting a reply. Give him a sec. Yeah. So maybe oh, meanwhile, uh, uh, okay. He said he, he can speak. Yeah. Because his child is sleeping close to him. Uh, oh. So meanwhile, maybe we will invite everyone to our next championship, Michael. Um. Yeah. But. Well, um. Yeah, we we just announced recently a Super GT Championship. It's like um, it's basically the, the top GT cars in the world, um, and it's going to be awesome. It's like all the tracks in in Japan starts in Fuji, Speedway ends at Suzuka, which I'm sure you you all know. Um, the car's much more fun to drive than the Senna, which I'm sure you all be happy <laughs> with. And uh, we've, also, we've also got a prize. Was it Thomas? You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Thanks to uh, Boston Track Repair, uh, Netherlands company. Uh, we have a prize for drivers in this series. Uh, it will be raffle. Uh, the winner of the raffle can uh, will be able to choose one prize from prepared list. Uh, list contains prizes up to 300 euros. So I think it's worth to drive with us <laughs> because of that. And let's say this one more time, very, like, uh, we are very grateful that uh, Bus and Track Repair decided to sponsor this series. Uh, we, invite, we invite everyone to, to, to this series and to visit their website. Maybe, maybe it will be useful for them. <laughs> uh, and yeah, well, we can't wait to see how that series will, uh, will, will look. We hope for very good racing, very good racing, very fun cars. Uh, Anything more, Michael? Uh, no, I think that's it. Um, yeah, just thank you, thank you, everyone who took part in the Hypercar series. It's been an eventful series, okay. ups and downs. But once again, congratulations to Cliff, Cliff for uh, dominating that. Uh, uh, every race you took part in, Cliff, you only you only didn't win once. Yes, you won you won six out of the eight mm -hmm. six out of the eight races. Well, that was be. that was a domination. Yeah, that's dominated, mate. Just just one race lost. It's just amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, but still, I hate ballast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we love it. Yeah, we'll give you more. Yeah, next series you will have one kilo, uh, one one hundred. No, start, so, no, uh, no worries. 
I guess, Cliff, uh, my question at this point is, what happened to you in the seventh race uh, when you didn't finish first? <laughs> me. Uh, 40, 40, 45 kilo uh, ballast. That, wow. That's like an excuse to me. Uh, excuse. Yeah. Uh, straight. Me and Auntie happened. <laughs> no, it yep. was. I know yeah. that Paul Ricard was very sensitive uh, in terms of ballast. Car was very sensitive there. Uh, especially there was that long, very, very long straight. Uh, so I suppose that didn't help Cliff. Yeah, and also, also in the corners. Um, I believe the previous race before Paul Ricard uh, at Magello, I had also 45 kilos, and it, it yeah, uh, it didn't felt like that. At Paul Ricard, it was uh, it was heavy. It was really heavy. But still, you lost with me and Anti, so you can feel like you lose now. Yeah, but who won today with more ballast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 35 kilos today, right? Well, hey, congratulations, guys, on a uh, wonderful season. Uh, what a way to top it off with a, a championship there from Cliff and uh, uh, in the rain at Sepang. And uh, thanks for letting me uh, broadcast the race for you. No, thank you for the broadcast, Heath. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll yeah, watch thank it. Thank you very much, Heath. You're, you're, I look forward to watching it. Yeah, I'll, you, are, uh, <laughs> you are our legend, mate. You are. Yes, they are, mate. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Uh, thank you so much awesome all right guys uh good luck to you with the uh, super gt and uh maybe if i get a day off or quit work on tuesdays i'll be able to broadcast some races for you would be nice uh, thank you very much steve we, we look right. forward to hopefully having you join us mate all right man take care guys take, take care. care bye you. Care. all right uh, that's the sim racing mania boys uh join us in the booth and uh man they're always a lively bunch uh, nine uh, guys up there joining us. Uh, good run for them. And uh, again, uh, what a uh, what a fun race it was to do tonight. And thanks so much for those guys uh, of uh, you know bringing it up. That uh, you know I've got I'm spring break this week, so I had Tuesday off and uh, was uh, jumped on the chance once I once uh, Thomas had contacted me. I said let's do it, man. So I started doing the preparations and. Uh, um, Got out there and drove a few, few laps on, at Sepang. I've been on it before, but uh, just reminding myself why I do not drive Sepang. It is a tough, tough track. Some guys absolutely love it, but I think it is a twisty, turny, undulating serpent. Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming in and uh, joining me here on Turn Left TV. It's been a uh, great little broadcast tonight. In the rain, as a pang. And again, uh, peace to everybody out there. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you were here and share my videos with all of your friends out throughout the uh, sim racing world. Uh, let them know that they can come in and smash that subscribe button right there and uh, get subscribed and let us, uh, that way they'll get updates of when races are going live. Uh, we got a full uh, week ahead of racing for you. Uh, so you definitely want to uh, hang tight. Make sure you get the subscribe button and smash the bell wherever my bell's at right there. Smash that bell. It's behind my head, right? <laughs> it's right there. Uh, things moves around on me, man. Moves around on me. Uh, but, hey, thanks for coming in. Uh, always appreciate my friends joining in a chat session. If they can't be out on the track, uh, that they come in here and watch the videos, too. And all those new folks who've uh, joined uh, Turn Left TV as of late, thank you so much for coming in. And also, you can click on the uh, link up in the banner of the channel and make a donation straight through PayPal if you'd like to make a donation. Don't forget to go down into the description of this race and help me out there. Follow that over to the uh, Fanatec website. If you're interested in a wheel, wheelbase, pedals, or a shifter, I've got the GT2 wheel rim, uh, the DD1 wheelbase, V3 inverted pedals, and the shifter. The pedals started it off all for me. I decided to... Uh, uh, upgrade my pedals and then like those pedals so much I saved up my money got a DD1 wheelbase and then bought the GT2 uh, wheel rim so uh, love 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 it I uh, cannot uh, say enough about how much I've enjoyed racing uh, with this setup and again I uh, always appreciate people coming in I'm honored that anybody come in and watch my broadcasts here at Turn Love TV really really am
Well, we got some more racing headed your way. Don't forget, on Saturday, March the 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be back at it. Red Bull Ring and the High Octane Racing League GT3 Series. It'll be live right here on Turn Left TV. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at Red Bull Ring in the GT3 cars. We're starting off the weekend at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the final race of the season in the High Octane Racing League Bushwhacker Series. 70 laps from IMS. That's home for me. I'm about 40 miles away from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Been there many times. It's race number 10, the final race of the season. We're going to crown the champion at Indy. 70 lap race on Friday, March the 26th. It'll be live right here on Turn Left TV. And then on Saturday, the Saturday Night Thunder, that's Saturday night. Stock cars at Martinsville, the paperclip, 250 laps, race number seven in that first season of 2021. And uh, what a fun series this is. Martinsville, we got three short tracks in a row. We had Bristol last week, Martinsville this week, and then we got Richmond the following week. So 27th of March, that's Saturday. Racing starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and of course, it'll be live right here on Turn Left TV. Well, congratulations to Cliff Vandeven for not only winning the race tonight, but also winning the championship in the Hypercar World Series. Congratulations, Cliff Vandeven. Fantastic run for you, and uh, I'm sure there'll be many, many more. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight here on Turn Left TV. Thanks so much for joining us. And you know what that means. That means I am at it.